Hi there everyone, this is STEM Lockdown Digital School and this is the lesson for Grade 12 IT and I am your presenter Lalani Lagransi. So as promised we're going to look at the final of 2018 question 2. Please first try it yourself because before you continue to watch any further. You can download these past papers from www.education.gov.za. This is the SQL part of the question. So 2.1 is SQL using your database. And it says here display all the details of employees in this table. Sort it alphabetically according to the surname field. Now I want you to try it yourself before I show you the memo. Here is the memo. Uh, we want to display all the fields, that is select all, from the table as listed in the question and sort it according to the surname. Ascending order, we don't need to add AC at the end, but we can if we want to. Let's have a look at the next question. So this question is asking us to display the surname and the first name and the number of children of all the permanent employees with more than three children. You try and I'll show you the memo soon. So here we go for question 2.1.2. We're displaying the surname, the first name, and the number of children. These were fields from TBL employees. And we had to display those records where the people had more than three children and were permanent employees. So you have to add and permanent is equal to true. You will see on the last two pages of the question paper, it contains the data types of all your fields for each table as well as some example data of each table. When you're in an exam, I suggest that you tear those pages out of your exam paper and put them next to you so you can keep them ready and handy to use while you're creating the code for these SQL statements. Here is the description of the table TBL payments and then on the last page you will see there's an example of data as well as the, re the relationship between the tables. So we can see they've been linked through employee number um, and TBL employees is what I call the parent table and one employee has many payments. So this next question is asking you to display the payment number as well as the ID number. Now the payment number is in the one table and the ID number is in the other table. So it's time to make use of our code reading from both tables. Press pause and see if you can get the output below. Here's the memo for the button question 2.1.3 and we're displaying the payment number and the ID number. We need to use make use of both tables and then after our from comes our where, where we indicate how these two tables are linked and they are linked through the employee number. The question then further asks us to display only those who were paid on the 17th of January 2017. So we have to add an AND and then a field name, payment date and remember to add your hashes around your date that you enter. Now try 2.1.4. We were asked to display delete the record with a payment number of 110. The payment number sits in the table TBL payments and we're going to delete all, you don't need that little star there, from TBL payments where the payment number, which was a number field, is equal to 110. This is your final question for SQL of the final of 2018. So press pause and try it yourself. Just before I go to the memo, I'd like you to take note of the wording per month. Remember I said that's an indication of a group by. So we were required to display the month number. We can use the month function on the date data type field called payment date. The heading had to be as month num, and then we had to apply the calculation that I gave that they gave us. But we wanted to know the total per month, so we had to sum this value. We were also required to display this value 
as a rand value so we have to add the currency there in quotes all these fields were in the table TBL payments and since we are displaying a field and we have an aggregate function we are going to group by the field we displaying remember we displayed the number of the month so this is question 2.2 of the funnel of 2018 and you're going to go to the tab sheet question 2.2 which contains the part for the Delphi code and on there you'll see some buttons and you will be completing all those buttons also take note of the restore button especially after you've done the update deductions and maybe your update didn't work correctly it would be important to restore your database in other words it goes back to the original state before you made changes and then try it again after you've changed your code so here is our first question press pause and try it yourself take note of all the code that was provided and make sure that you add your code after the comment that said enter your code here very important is when you're looping through a table that you start with your dot first you have your while not end of the table and then your dot next all inside of the loop and your next must not be inside of an if or an else unless you're using a delete inside of a loop so this is the basics and then usually I just code in between remember now that we can't use dot filter dot sort or dot locate so in order to find anything using auto tables you are going to have to loop through your table I'm testing every record here I'm testing the permanent field to see if it's false because the question asked me to find all the temporary people and permanent was a field name a yes no field and if it was true it was a permanent employee and if it was false the person was a temp so here I'm just displaying the surname with my hash nines to create those neat columns that tab stops here at the top has been done for me and then the first name but what was very important here is that the number of children you have int to string around that field name children was a number field and if you don't have into string your program is going to crash and it's going to give you an error because you're trying to display a number field in a string property and that is inside of your rich edit to display a date time data type field we would use date to string and then for any other number so whether it is double integer or currency we'll use into string or float to string f but when you want to display a boolean field a yes no data type you probably have to go and add an if statement to test if that field is true and then maybe add a string that says yes or no or true or false as if we would use bool to string in here we would not get nice output we'll get negative one instead of yes no or true or false so the no will indicate a zero and then the yes will be shown as a negative one and that's not usually how we do our output now you can try question 2.2.2 the insert press pause and I'll show you the memo soon at the bottom of your table after you've clicked the button you would see your new record here at the bottom so the insert and edit looks very similar we start with the name of our table then a dot insert whereas when we're editing or updating it we're going to have dot edit but both of them then have a dot post at the end to post the changes to the database and both of them also have the table names and field names on the left of the assignment statement to make changes to these fields in this instance it was hard code all the way through for all our fields but this could be replaced with variables in this instance we had the name and the surname the ID number all as text data types so I've put them in inverted commas and then permanent was either true or false so I've just used true you could also use yes but then you would have to put it in inverted commas or you could also add a negative one on the right of the assignment statement and the number of children was three so it's very simple just add the three there after the assignment statement which could be replaced with a integer variable if the question required you to get input from the user here is the last question 
and we had to make changes but take note of the sentence here at the top that says the user must select a record from the db grid that means that wherever that little black triangle sits that's the record we're going to make changes to we don't have to search for this record we can just make the change to the one that the person clicked on and we are going to make a change to the deduction field by increasing the deduction amount that means take the existing amount and adding one percent of the gross salary to it and here is some examples of when uh, payment number 112 was the active record and the change was recorded this screenshot is of what the active record was before the change was made and then you'll see the deductions went up after this change Press pause, I'm going to show you the memo now. So as I said before, remember your edit and your dot post. Remember to read from or write to, in this case, the correct table. Uh, we are making a change to the deductions field. We are able to make changes to more than one field at a time. We'll just place it between the edit and the post, as we did with insert. Then an assignment statement, and I want to add to the existing amount in my deductions. So that's why I'm using this field here, plus and then 1% of my gross salary must be added to that value and that's what I'm doing after the plus here. Take note there was no searching needed because remember we're making a change to the active record or the record that the user selected on the DB grid. So that's the end of our final of 2018 question 2, looking at SQL as well as database programming. Remember to go to education.gov.za under Curriculum National Senior Certificate. You can download your past papers. Under National Curriculum Statements, look at the exam guidelines for 2018 for IT. Those were the last ones we received. And this link here might also be useful for you with some tips and tricks on your final exam. Before you watch our next lesson, have a look at the final of 2018 question 3 and try it yourself. You will really benefit more from the lesson if you do try it yourself first. Thank you for watching Grade 12 IT at STEM Lockdown Digital School. And please follow Africa Teen Gigs on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. And hopefully you have found these videos on YouTube under the Africa Teen Gigs channel. Hope to see you soon.